Hey, Spuddies, Potatabic Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Russia in a culture game, and things are going pretty damn nice. That was my door automatically closing because it has a soft close hinge that is possibly louder than a sun going supernova, which I'm pretty sure suns going supernova don't make any noise because there is no pressure in the vacuum of space. There might be gravitational pressure. Who knows? Ask Lido? 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 Whatever that thing is. Okay, so we just got humanism giving us access to the art museum. We will be making use of the art museum this game, and not the archaeological museum, because we earn a lot of great artist points. We don't need the Taj Mahal. We will probably get an archaeological museum for two reasons. First of all, it boosts cultural heritage if we do that. And the second reason is it boosts combustion if we do that. So there are reasons to do it. So I think our next goal is basically to get to conservation. Now in order to get to conservation we should probably hit opera and ballet first. So we're going to get to work on opera and ballet and I would really like to build an art museum before I hit opera and ballet to boost that. So I'm probably going to go mercantilism into civil engineering in order to get the 30% production boost towards builders. I think that would be a reasonable move because we don't plan to earn a great merchant this game. We could in theory faith buy one but I don't think that's necessary. World Congress, aid request. I will aid tomorrow. That doesn't seem like too big of a deal. Now now what do we have going here? So this jade will cause a little bit of an appeal problem, but there's actually a really nice national park along here that has some potential right there. And if that's the logical conclusion of that national park, well, then possibly we could fit a ski resort here, a ski resort here, a another national pork. Do love some national pork. We're pork and a little national. Weird champ. We, we could fit another. Well, I mean, it's just it's just all national parks then. That is the best use of tundra. National parks. I had considered a preserve. I am tempted by the possibility of a national park down here. And this is just what my faith is going to go towards. And you know, there is potential for a preserve right here in Emily Castagnier. We could put a preserve right there and there could fit a really, really nice national park in here and then another ski resort. So we've basically got this sector of my empire planned. We're gonna be doing a lot of planning here because we are coming up to the time when all these national parks will need to be built. So the jade is a little bit of a problem. It's not a game ending problem. It's just a little bit of a problem. So where can I fit another national park in terms of appeal? I think I could fit a national park right here. I could also fit one right there, which would neatly settle one right here. So if a national park goes here, then another one could go right here. So now there's a national park right here. And then this is actually prime real estate for a preserve. We could also do another ski resort over here. This one could be a national park, I think. Things are starting to fit together in a very neat and tidy way. There's a very obvious preserve here, I feel, for the city of Tula. And then probably a holy site and a theater square. I'm going to gold purchase the granary to get the city growing. And I'm immediately going to get to work on that lavra because that will lead to more growth. The potential here for a lot of good things is quite high. And one, two, three, four, we could potentially fit another national park right there. Oh, do you know what? The appeal's pretty bad around here. We want to avoid that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Avoid that, avoid that, avoid. So what can we do in and around this area? Well, we can't really do much here because there's luxuries. I don't want to de-improve luxuries or strategics. That's just a personal preference. You can totally do that. I just prefer not to. And I try to build my national parks around the existing infrastructure rather than trying to like fit the existing infrastructure around my national parks. I prefer just the other way to do that. I do think there's a national park over here. I don't know if there's another one over here. It's either, I think it's here. I think this is it right here. So what can we do down around Zakharb. We already have one in Zakharb. I would like one in Gordon Ab Arbutnot, but I don't think we can pull it off in here. The land is just too low quality. In theory, there's one here. Do you know what? It's all floodplains. Low appeal floodplains is bad for national park, but we actually have so much national park potential. So I don't think we really need to delete many of these pins. I will be hiding my pins though for the majority of the rest of the gameplay, at least until we have conservation. But I feel pretty happy with how we've planned our empire. And this is just going to tell you how many builders we're going to need in the near future, which could make us do a really, really interesting build their push at conservation or even a pre-conservation builder push maybe even a pre-conservation faith push like if I locked in faith right now oh I guess I already am pumping faith out of these places like let's say I cancelled this and I went in here I could get an extra 10 faith per turn that would be pretty good we'll see what we need to do I may hard build my builders rather than faith buying them yeah I'm feeling super happy with those development moves towards the rest of my empire this era does end soon and I don't have my era score so I think what I might have to do is to buy some kind of galley. Do I have any cities near water? I don't have a city near water. So I think levying Nan Madal will get me one. That'll be 480. And then faith buying a great person. Let's have a look. The free trader could be good. I'm gonna take the free trader. It's a thousand faith. Marco Polo is pretty good. Plus three error score. Boom. That also got us mercantilism. So we just nailed it. Golden Age secured. Very happy about that. Let's get started on the art museum because we want to boost that. We also have, we also have great works of art to put away. Speaking of which, Brandon Tate. I think I'm going to get... 
started on my art museums? Is that what I want to do? Do I want to go art museum in here? Let me have a look. Shift S. Is there a preserve in the city? There is, right there. It's not particularly important in the short term, but long term that preserve could be very useful, as could a commercial hub. I think the move is to go for the art museum. It's worth four culture per turn, which is twice its base. It'll take 21 turns to build. That's a long, long time. We are churning a lot of faith in Brandon Tate. If I went up to higher production, I could get it down to 17 turns. And if I take this off, it'd be 21 turns. I could also take one of these production tiles off the city of Adam Dobb and get it down to 15. 15 feels manageable. 15 turns feels manageable. We've got the amphitheater here in Emmy Castagne. We can totally place the entertainment complex, which I will do immediately. Should I go for that preserve? We're not quite ready for our preserve, so I'm gonna go for the entertainment complex because it makes the theater square in this city better. And I will lock that theater square in and probably immediately build it, honestly. All right, Marco Polo is gonna pop into here, getting me an extra trader. I'm gonna use that internal trader to boost Tula because this is what my weakest cities. I do have room for more trade. Brandon Tate could use a trader too. So let me sell some money. Ooh, do you know what I need to do too? I actually need to start trading internationally. So in that case, I'm gonna be putting my traders in my capital. It's a simple question. What are our highest gold trade routes? Tula to Borsipa. Let's try from the capital first. See how far we can get. Also, I need to get my consulate and chancery up. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm missing out because of the fact that I don't have them. We've got the Granary and Zach Harvey, which I'm very happy about. We could get the ancient walls. I don't think it's necessary because there is a chance to roll a city center boost in the next 24 turns when we get the next World Congress. So I think I am just gonna go for the art museum. So we definitely want to trade with Persia. Oh yeah, well, there's a lot of signs here from trading with Persia. So I'm going to trade with Mashad. We're going to buy ourselves another trader in here. I'm going to move this one to the... Well, I guess you actually do need the help. So you should trade with Wesley Clausen because that will actually help you out a lot. That's five food, three production. That's going to really skyrocket the city. Let's harvest. We'll get the Lavra slightly faster. He wants a research alliance. Actually, I like that as a move because I don't need Persia to be my enemy. In fact, I kind of want them to be my friend. Let's declare a friendship with you and you could do an internal trade route. It's a very long time to get a theater square, but you do have productive tiles eventually. So I tell you what we'll do. We'll just move a builder over there to help you out. Now you've got a lot of food tiles, which is not ideal, but I think it is important to start getting those international trade routes. In particular, if I get a trade route into Babylon, that'll let me start trading with further west. Yeah, we're going to trade with Borsipa and we'll buy another trader. I'm going to travel to a new city. Probably the Gallic city, maybe. We're in the medieval era next turn. I am gonna grab myself another market because the extra gold that comes from these trade routes is actually really damn nice. Now we can't reach anyone else, but it might be good to trade with Geneva. And I think it might also be good to trade with the city of Babylon because I will get a trading post there eventually. So I'm gonna trade with both of those because that will open up potential trade routes west. We'll trade with Geneva, Borsipa and Babylon. That'll give me trading posts that will let me reach potentially Gaul, possibly Georgia, possibly not, it depends. We will see what we can do. We did get the Lavra and Tula, which means it's time to get the shrine. I could maybe buy the shrine and sell something and buy that luxury right there. Some of our cities are very happy. I'll sell my Diplo favor for now. See if anyone wants my iron or horses. No, no buyers for iron or horses. That's fine. But I can use the gold to buy a shrine, which will help the city grow faster and hopefully actually work productive tiles. Oh man, there's a delightful island down here that I could get to maybe if I decide to go for the a different golden age. We'll see what golden ages option we have in the next era. There is some potential here. So the fact that I'm in a golden age and Persia isn't, is nice. Let's have a look. So monumentality could be useful. We could pre-build a lot of builders. Reform the coinage is nice. Exodus the evangelists would be nice, but it would require us to spend faith. And I really don't want to spend faith on spreading my religion anymore because it doesn't give me error score. And that's what I was mainly spreading my religion for, was the error score. And also it just provides a little bit of religion defense. Because like I'm basically getting what? About 5% of a missionary pressure across the continent every turn, which is, I don't think I need to tell you that's a lot of pressure. Right, dedication. Honestly, I think monumentality here is kind of like based. Look at all these tiles I have to improve. I'm gonna need like one, two, three, four. Each one of these is like an entire builder. Every national park is like a whole builder. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 builders that I'll have to hard build. Slightly less if I buy them out of Liang. I could in theory get a settler down here. Depends on if I can get it here in time. And if I can get it here unharmed by the like barbarian I don't think spending faith for that is worth it just to get silk. I think I'm better off just taking reform the coinage, banking my faith and then building my builders because I am about to get civil engineering, which is a 30% production boost towards builders. So we've got a few things coming coming down the line that will be useful for us. Okay, the entertainment complex is done in Castagnier. Let's get that art museum. Keep that culture pumping. Put a mine here for Adam Dobb because it needs the production. Opera and ballet has advanced because we built the art museum. I'm going to go ahead and buy the consulate and then in the capital. Ooh, I could get the Kilwa here. 
The Killwa is a fantastic build. I didn't even think I was going to get it this game. I think I'm going to go for it and see if we can do it. It would be sick if we could. One other thing that I would really like to be building is some kind of scouting unit. And actually, to that end, a couple missionaries would make a great scouting pair. And it'll just cost me like a single national park. But I think the information I might glean from using the missionary scouting pair will actually be worth it in the long run. There's civil engineering, so we have access to public work. We're going to pop in skyscrapers for now and the public works card because we want that production towards wonders we can drop that plus one production per city it's just not as relevant as it used to be i'm going to send a missionary over this way whose job it is is to scout and then i'm going to send a missionary over this way whose job it is is to scout i just i don't want i don't want to get in any trouble just want to scout scouting missionaries so i think colonialism is our next technology we would like to get to natural history having a single archaeological museum would be the move in fact i regret building an art museum here i think i'm going to switch it to a archaeological museum i think that's the right move because that will boost this and then I'll have at least one archaeologist. Let's grab a money and we'll pop her into Zach Harvey for the amenities and housing, thanks to our government building. I'm going to just create all my statues in Wesley Clawson, even though I know it's not optimal. There's siege tactics. So we do have access to Renaissance walls. I'm just going to tell my capital to focus on production so we can shave some turns off the Kilwa. And actually, I think at this phase of the game, I think all of my cities should be focused on production and not faith. I need as many hammers as I can get, as many cogs, right? So Renaissance walls is done, which means we can go to printing. Printing will double the tourism yields from our great works, which will massively massively improve our tourism. Well, kind of almost double it. We're getting a tourist every, you know, you know nominal number of turns, about 20-ish turns from Persia. So we do need to get that up. Persia is gaining tourists rather quickly, but we have, we have started, okay? We're 10% of Maori. Market completed in Gordon Abunot. Let's go ahead and buy a trader here in the capital. That's the goal. The market is completed. There is a small potential preserve here. So I think I will place it. It's not super important, but I am going to place it. Instead, I would rather get those art museums up. Those are useful. Donatello has finished and now we have all three of his artworks. Now it's important to note about how these artworks work. The very first one will give us three culture and two tourism because it's the first sculpture from this artist, the first work from this artist. Every other work from the same artist will only give you one culture and one tourism. That's why it's really good to spread them out, right? If you think about the total yield that I can get here, it's nine culture and six tourism. Right now, never mind that it's being doubled. Right now I'm getting five culture and four tourism. It is being doubled. It should be nine culture and 12 tourism. So I'm really not hitting the potential here. Really want you to just take that in. We are not hitting our potential by having all of these housed in the same place, but I had nowhere else to put them. And I think housing them here is better than housing them nowhere. Let's gain sources on Gaul. Looks like Bagacum is going independent. I'm going to make a crossbowman to fight off this line infantry. I don't care how ineffective it is. My trade route to Mashad should be going through Susa. So I am going to trade with Susa. It'll take 48 turns for that trade route to complete, but it will eventually give me a trading post. It's a small optimization in gold. Probably in theory, I should have put the kill well over here, but it's not important. Shoot with the crossbow. You fortify and then upgrade to a man at arms. You should be able to hold a cross of river versus that guy, especially with the support bonus. It's annoying that that's what I have to do, but it is. All right, so he did 41 damage. We did 22 back. We shoot him again. You fortify again. We will claim another great artist. Art museum over here will finish and then we'll have to do a great work swapping. All right, we're getting some good scouting information with these missionaries already. Nice, this unit leveled up. I'm going to go ahead and take the tortoise promotion. Shoot this guy once again. I can claim another great person, another writer, Niccolo Machiavelli. I'll teleport Niccolo Machiavelli over here. You just keep retreating from those annoying apostles. Don't let them catch you. You got to escape. So there's colonialism. Fishing boats get plus one production. We've access to Raj and colonial taxes, native conquest, you know, all sort of like mid to late game colonialism stuff. The art museum is done in here. I'm going to put a single great work in and then I'm going to wait for this great work to cool down and move it. And then I'll put one into the capital. There's nothing to work on in here, which means we have a choice. We can work on a wonder, which is a reasonable amount of production into tourism. We could work on medieval walls, which is a similar investment cost return on investment. However, we could wait 11 turns and gamble on the prospect of getting a another 100% bonus towards walls, which makes me want to build builders for, I'm going to build three builders here while we wait. We could also choose to build a spy, but I think it's good to start pre-building those builders so that they're ready. They're in position when the time comes to chop and build and improve all this land and get the ski resorts, all that stuff. I think being prepared for that moment will earn us a lot of dividends. There is printing. We've access to the Forbidden City and our tourism from Great Works of Riding has been doubled, so we are earning tourists faster. About 20 turns per tourist as it currently stands. We're slowly getting that down and down and down. Next step for us in this game, things like industrialization are actually really handy. Getting 
up to computers is really good. It's 25% tourism boost across your entire empire. I don't really care about my coastal stuff. I could go towards banking. That is worth five gold per turn per commercial hub. More if I could actually find some city states. And it's a big problem that I don't have the exploration level that I need. So I think what I might do is send one of these great riders to go explore because they're relatively mobile and they're unimportant. To that end, I'm going to get cartography like immediately so that I can embark this great rider and send them to go get me stuff. Because if they get killed, they just get sent back. Important thing to do is don't stand beside a city. That'll make the AI think you're trying to convert it. If you just kind of like whistle through their territory, they might not notice you. Okay, we have the Enlightenment, which will have religious and tourism against us. We're almost out of the Gallic territory where we can start to explore the world. We did build the temple in Tula, which I'm very happy about. Let's get that monument, that production. It's coming in really nice. We're in Fez, coming into Georgia, and we're going to be exploring the polar caps with a great rider. <laughs> I love that. Okay, we have pretty good knowledge of the Gallic place. Let's do the foment unrest. Well, stealing the science boost is actually useful. We should do the thing that actually benefits us rather than just doing the one that has the highest percentage chance of leveling him up. Although that technically does give us a better return on investment long term. Natural history has advanced considerably because we managed to finish the archaeological museum and we are going to get the arena in here. Yep, I think so. I'm going to tell the city to grow. I do need to see if I can buy any luxuries. Yep, two luxuries for purchase. And see if we can sell off some. Any buyers for these things? It looks like a little bit. We'll grab the arena. Did I ever unlock Niter? I did. And I don't think I found any in my empire, sadly. Yeah, I think we just skipped it. I think I will keep Dermudi. It's a it's a free city that can, in theory, fit. It can fit a single national park. But quite importantly, actually, if I look at my city overlap. Oh, yeah, look at that city overlap over here. That's a seven city overlap. Now, that is juicy. In the city of Dermuti, I could in theory go for a fast industrial zone and an encampment. Aqueduct, industrial zone, encampment type thing. Or aqueduct, industrial zone, encampment. To try to build a mid to late game production powerhouse. I think what I absolutely have to do is to buy the watermill here. Buy the granary. Buy the monument. Tell the city to focus on production and then take some of the nearby land. And we'll get to work on that aqueduct. This city could use a trade route for sure. We have our very first artist, which I'm very happy about. Nowhere to put great works of music yet, though. That'll take a while. Uh, this missionary might be dead. Oh, wait. He might live. 15 population in Adam Dobb. We have opera and, and ballet. When she's loop around there. And we're going to go for natural history now so we can get an archaeologist. Also access to things like the Ferris wheel, the aquarium, and importantly, the zoo. That'll be AOE amenities right there. Keeping our amenities high will get us more production. Art museum. Really happy with the art museum being finished in here because I should now be able to move these great works around and start to hit the real potential. So Zach Harvey has pretty much all of the the districts and stuff that we want. It has a commercial up a theater square to Lavra. Those are my three core districts. It depends on what else I want. If I want somewhere to produce military, I could go for the encampment. If I want slightly more tourism, I could go for the entertainment complex. If I want more production in general, I could go for this. I think honestly, the thing I should go for is possibly like some actual skirmisher scouts or like a courser or two to scout. I'm going to grab myself a single courser. You know what? That doesn't make sense. I should totally be building builders. We're coming up to the point where I'm going to need all those builders. So the sooner I have them built, the better. Let's get the amphitheater in Adam Dobb. We're going to send envoys. I have 12 envoys to send and nowhere useful to send them. That is grim. So where am I going to start with national parks? I think close to the capital is best because I have the highest yields here. So I want the extra amenities to be centralized in the capital if possible. <gasps> oh, wait, uh, because I swapped a tile, I don't think I can get this in the capital. This might not be a valid national park because I can't get all the tiles in a single city. Whoops, tiny little error. That does inform me where the first national park will go which is in my capital but now I have to make a decision about where the next one will go I'll probably start filling in this area here then Tula Tula ta -ta -ta, what a wonderful phrase sorry whenever I see the name Tula I think of that Hakuna Matata I don't think there's really a lot of time to build a theater square in here so I'm going to focus on getting the walls up especially because this is a new low production city and by that I mean it is a new and low production city we have met Spain it's an honor to meet you exchange information on capital he's really far away so it's going to be hard to trade with him so I really hope he doesn't have good culture and it looks like he has currently second best but he is getting better, which means we should figure out a way to deal with him. Well, first things first, let's get open borders before he hates our guts. I think we have open borders with basically everyone. We're missing it with Gaul. Open borders with Gaul secured. This screen, by the way, is so handy. It's the tourism overview screen. It should be included in my mod pack. It's just a UI mod. Honestly, I think my favorite types of mods are UI mods. Gameplay mods are cool, but if you make the game easier to play just by like rebuilding a piece of the UI, you're awesome. And the Maori we need open borders with for that 25% tourism boost. That 25% 
tourism boost will speed us through things slightly. We should be getting a tourist roughly every uh, 16 turns per player. So we're getting seven tourists every 16 turns, which is a tourist every two turns or so. So we're looking at about what, 160 turns left in the game at the current pace. And we're only just now entering into the era where we'll start generating insane, insane amounts of tourism. Okay, this is big. Getting control of Kilwa is actually quite nice because now it opens up some interesting potential if we can get control of two scientific city-states. Because the Kilwa gives you a 15% boost to the yield that a city-state is associated with if you are the suzerain of it. So for example, Nan Madal will give you a 15% culture boost in this city. And in fact, if I go to Wesley Cawson, you can see here, there's a 30% modifier, 15% of that is coming from Nan Madal. The other 15% is coming from, I believe, Pingala. So quite useful. And if I can get a second cultural city-state, that will go up to 30% in the capital and 15% around the rest of my empire. And, but in particular, this does mean that getting control of somewhere like Hattusa actually becomes valuable because if you look at my science, it will go up to 112. And then if I grab another one like Geneva, boom, it'll go up to 142, both in part because I'm getting a 15% science boost from Geneva, but I am now getting an empire-wide 15% science boost from the Kilwa on top. So that's a huge science boost right there. And also don't forget the diplomatic favor, the political positioning, all that sort of stuff. So now exploring has become even more important, which is why I'm glad I'm able to launch these guys out into the water. And to that end, getting square rigging would give movement to embarked units. And in fact, I should probably look around for more movement for embarked units. I think square rigging is the first one that you get. And then you get plus two at steam power, yeah. So we'll go for square rigging, top half of the tech tree. We wanna to head to industrialization anyway. I probably go square rigging, banking into industrialization. That seems reasonable to me. It's not a super optimal path, but it is what I would consider to be an okay path. So with Kilwa done, we might wanna get the Bolshoi theater. I also need to get my chancery, which means potentially selling off some resources right now. Let's have a look and see what people will buy. And I think I just sold enough to buy the chancery. That'll get me plus three influence per turn, but also a very nice, very nice three culture and three science. And that should scale up as the game goes on as I get more suzerainties. I could put two points in here and get an, get an extra three to five science per turn. And so I will. Let's get that industrial zone first. I want that production, especially because I'm heading towards industrialization right now. So being able to get the factory and the coal power plant, all that stuff online nice and early will greatly help me out with my production. Tourism is looking good. We're up over a hundred tourism now. Natural history is completed. So we have access to archaeologists now as well as the water park the aquarium, Ferris wheel, the hermitage, probably isn't a bad one to build, and the zoo. I don't think I need to change my government. I'm relatively happy with the government for wonder building. I mean, I'm trying to think of a card that would be better to be plugged into the wonder card right now. Republican legacy, yeah. Eight amenities and eight housing, easily better. Right, let's go for conservation, and then we're gonna immediately switch over to reformed church. We don't have to buy all our naturalists immediately. We can delay that slightly while we work on builders and walls. Grab that arena. Yeah, I'm gonna work on the walls first, and then the builders. Got six envoys, nowhere to spend them. I guess I could put them in the capital if I wanted to build things quicker. I don't really want to. Right, another great artist is recruited. We'll be able to get some very happy work in. Oh, Chinguetti is huge. We need to instantly take Susan to have Chinguetti because the sheer amount of faith that this enables is insane. 230 faith instantly becomes 347 faith. And if I go up to the next level with them, that should go up even higher. Yeah, 374 faith per turn. That is massive to find a place like Chinguetti. Explosive. We're gonna grab the workshop and then the medieval wall. The next session is in one turn. You managed to get a builder. Good job. Start working on those walls. Now is the optimal prime, Optimus prime, optimal prime time to start working on walls basically everywhere. Michelangelo creates a great work. We have room for another pair of great works of writing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one out of the capital and move it to Cameron Holder so I can put a great work of music in there because I think great works of music have better base stats. So if I go in here, I take this out. I take this great work of music and I pop it in there. Yeah, it's a it's a four eight on its own, whereas that's the power of two great works of things in the capital, two great works of writing in the capital. Sorry, the du, bu, du, bu, du. it has it has better base stats, right? Four four compared to two two, so really good. Do, do, do. Escape on foot. Agent was killed. Who cares? Wasn't important in the grand scheme of things. I'll stop spying on you. Sorry, bro. I actually refused because I didn't care where I was clicking. Yeah. So this this is the power of exploration. Like one of the biggest things that like beyond settlers, beyond making builders that players fail to do in the mid and late game is simply exploring. Okay. We didn't get the resolution we wanted, but the AI will almost always vote for cheaper production. And we're going to vote for trade routes for me. I'll put two votes into that because that will typically, not always, typically 
secure you a win. Ah, so Nader Shah won this time. Production was cheaper, not a big deal. But I think on the verge of getting conservation and completely rebuilding my entire empire that we planned this episode, I'm going to go ahead and call that the end of this video. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.